Hello, good afternoon. My name is Toby Howard, in case you haven't met me. Um, you may have heard my name, but I work in Maps and Records Department, and I manage the uh, space management system, which houses um, room information about rooms and buildings. So a lot of the stuff that um, I'm going to be going over today, that data is housed in, in the space management system. All right? If, is this okay? Or would you like want one? Nap time? Not nap time. All right. I'm a funny guy. I'm the only one that says that. All right. Um, has anyone here, or who here has not gone to the FIMS building page? Everyone's kind of been there once or twice? Yeah? Okay. So I will... I'll just go through stuff. If you guys have questions that pop up related to how you might use it, go ahead and bring that question up and we'll talk about it. All right? Because uh, some of my big, uh, big objectives is to make sure that if I can, I try to save you guys time. Right? Make sure you, you, you know what's there, maybe you know how to get to it, maybe you don't know how to get to it, but at least if you know it's there, you have one spot to go. And it just takes you a few minutes to find it and save some time there. So make you comfortable when you view the information. That's just my touchy-feely bullet item right there. But um, so yeah, you can pull up various info building related information um, in the portal. Names, addresses, aliases for buildings, and ways to get around that. But. So a lot of things here. Um, the browser, the second bullet item down there, web browser, that's pretty obvious. But you, if you have a um, mobile device, an iPad, or Galaxy, or Android, or something, or even a smartphone, you can still pull this information up out in the field. Even a building list, if you needed to, for some reason, I don't know if you deal with emergency towers or something out there, and you just wanted to know what the address was on that, you could just pull that information up right there. So it kind of goes down at the, the third item. You can uh, not only just addresses, but you can get parcel numbers. Who find out who the building manager is. You're going to do some construction work outside. There's three perimeter buildings you want to notify the building manager on. You can just quickly go here and grab the building managers, get their email, phone number, whatever. Okay. And um, a lot of people use it for the, uh, the floor plans. Get a quick link to floor plans. There's also a URL that will take you there, um, and you'll save it a couple clicks um, on the searching for floor plans, and I'll show that later. Um, okay. Navigation. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time right here because everyone's used it. It's sims.stanford.edu, and you enter, you search, and you do the data, right? You don't need to talk too much down. If I do seem to go past something that you want me to spend more time on, just raise your hand, okay? Otherwise. Yes, it does. In this case, um, I chose a nice building that has zone O. It looks like a little Cheerio or something like that. And I don't always think about food. In case you so you're familiar with this again. I, I just did PowerPoint slides and stuff just to make sure I could cover people that may have not been on the FIM stage yet. So we have a quick back section, space reports. I'm going to go inside and, and explain or talk a little bit more about these. And then the floor plan. The DWF format is, is, is an older one that we provided years ago, we, and we still have it up there. Um, if you have a Mac, um, you can't use that. And, and it's just a lot easier now. Um, I just keep telling everyone just to pull up the PDF files. So. If you have a need to get DWG files also, we have the floor plans um, in box, and I've only invited uh, some of the um, operational type staff who have access to that so they can just go up and pull down a floor plan. And with you don't even need AutoCAD. You can take that DWG file and you can go into um, AutoCAD WS, and um, there's a tech talk on that, so it's available. Um, on the website if you wanted to do that, but it's pretty easy. It's free, AutoCAD WS, give them your email ad address, a password, and you're, and you're in. And then you can open up a DWG file. You can remove 
walls, add walls, add lines. It's, it's a, um, a stripped down version of, of AutoCAD. So, kind of nice. All right. A little quicker than I thought. The, the, uh, the uh, URL for floor plans is simply floorplans.stanford.edu. To get to the map, instead of going in um, through maps and records um, and then doing searching for the online archive, you can just type in maps-archives. <laughs> And in most cases on campus or in campus buildings, you just type in maps-archive, just like maps or campus-map, right? Just exclude that last part there. Um, obtaining building IDs, address assignments, um, that's pretty straightforward. Room counts by room type and by department. I'm going to touch on all of these things. Location of building, it's all pretty straightforward. Have any of you um, seen color-coded floor plans? Yeah, do any of you who have not seen them have a need to see color-coded floor plans? You even know what a color-coded floor plan is? It's color-coded. Um, so we do have floor plans that basically will identify the groups on a floor. And they'll be, it'll be hatched colored. So these three rooms belong to the philosophy department. And there's a little legend that identifies the room count and the total square footage for each department laid out in there. We also have color coded um, by room type, um, faculty members um, as well. And we also have occupants. Uh, so if you wanted to get the floor, not all the floor plans have all the occupants listed. The data is only as good as the person that's maintaining it out in, into the department. Um, School of Medicine is really good at maintaining their information. They do a space chargeback. They kind of got driven to do that. Some of the other schools, School of Engineering is usually pretty good. Some of the other ones, not, not as much. Um, for what? What's that? Well, it is ongoing, but there is a, um annual space inventory that's done every summer. And I walk through a space. Each department has one or more space coordinators. They identify if it's a conference room, if it's a lab, if it's a student office, um, and update the information. And so, like, if you wanted to relamp all of the restrooms in the main quad, which is an example I use quite a bit, you could come in here and grab a list of accounts of how many restrooms are there. Right, and what's the total square footage? And maybe you're just going to figure whatever five lights per restroom, this many restrooms, and you know get a cost estimated cost breakdown on that. Okay. And if you don't see a way to easily get the information the way you want it from here, then just shoot me an email. Okay. Yeah, my my email address is dobi d o b i e at Stanford. Um, all of the pages have email address links at the bottom, so you can just click that. Because my name's kind of hard to remember. Demo time. It's not Dum Dum style time. Okay. Does anyone have any like questions or any kind of information that you'd like to get out? Just gonna jump into FIMS here. You guys have all seen this and entered in already, right? So. This one I don't like to use pull down too much because I can't do a control F and just search everything in there. I have to kind of know what the, the building name is and if it's uh, Gates, is it, does, it, does the word start with G Gates or is it, you know, James, you know, something? Is it, how, you know, what is it? So I don't prefer to use that one too much. I like to use this with wild cards. So if I wanted all the buildings in the main quad, I can just type zero one and a percent sign and get all of the buildings in the main quad. Maybe I don't know what the building number is or something, right? Or I wanted I'm searching for classroom name, a class specific classroom or something, or some aliases for a building. The system really is really just to search for a building and get the building. But you can kind of find ways around if you wanted to search for certain classrooms or something and get a list of 
all the buildings in the main quad. So, yes, please. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Right. Well, let me. I'll go through, and, and um, that would be more like in the, when we get to online archives. Okay. But um, if we don't have something, you could just send us an email and let us know that you were searching for something and you couldn't find it. Because we do have, for the research park, um, I thought every building in there. The plans that we have may say HP or Dell or whomever was there in 1976. But um, I remember keying in a lot of that information in the research park. Um, it might be it may be old, but um, yeah. So just shoot us an email and give us the address, um, and I'll touch on some of that in the online archives too. All right, because some of the buildings may not have building IDs yet, so you have to search by the um, address. And it's better not to put in too much specific information, but use wildcards, right? Okay. So just did a search, and now we're in view. Um, I don't know how much to go over. I'll just try to go over some of this stuff real quick because some of you may have been in here many times already, and I don't want to talk to too much of something you already know. But we do have three different types of um, building roll-up summaries that we do, and there is a definition of what those three are. And the roll-ups basically occur um, based on the room type of a room. So um, unassignable space is basically things where people won't occupy, hallways, um, mechanical rooms, and stuff like that. That space would be considered um, part, of the, uh, part of the usable. So this is assignable, offices, conference rooms, labs. This is um, the assignable plus the um, unassignable, and then this is the growth. I hope I didn't confuse anybody, but if you don't use that, then just forget, just forget about it. Space reports are kind of cool because you can just get summaries of all of the different room types that are available in that building and a room count. So if you were, if you had, if you have a lot of buildings, send the request to me and I can just export it all into Excel. This is really meant for a one, onesie, twosie type thing. You've got three buildings and you need to get a count of the mechanical rooms or something like that. You could do it this way. If you wanted all of the account of all the mechanical rooms on campus, then just send that to me. Um, I have a lot of saved queries that I've done over the time, so it wouldn't take me much but just open that query, run it, and export it to Excel. All right? And it's only 10 bucks, so it doesn't cost that much. Anyone can pull 10 bucks. Any questions on the room type? Oh, with that room type, you can, if you are interested in the mechanical rooms here, this doesn't, it says there's two mechanical rooms, but it doesn't tell you where they are. You can just click on this and it will give you the room numbers here. It tells you what floor they're on. Clicking on the room isn't gonna bring up, it'd be nice, maybe if there's a little image or floor plan here, but um, at this point it does, it just gives you the square footage of the room and, and that room number. You could open up another window and get to the floor plan if you wanted to do that. Um, or just go back. Go back to the main page. Did I click on main page? 
and then go to the floor plan and look for B013 on the basement level. Right. And if you deal with square footage information, yeah, yes. So these are pretty apparent. Square foot by floor. You got three groupings and, and the fours. If you ever need any kind of other breakouts, um, you can just easily send a request in. Square foot by department. And the room information I say for last, but they, basically these are these are all the rooms that are in the building. It'll start at the lowest floor, zero zero is basement, list all of the room numbers, tell you what type of room it is, um, the square footage, and and who's using it. Unassignable space, just that's just the, the default for any um, unassignable space. Mostly the offices and stuff like that are going to have the departments added into it. Scheduling department has some classrooms. Yes. Yeah. And hallways are um, considered room type zero to zero circulation, which is combined, which makes sense, but it's combined, that's combined with elevators and um, stairwells. So if you were to pull up the circulation right here, hallways, the standard is um, CIRC CERT 01, and those are just polylined areas that represent that. You'd have to go to the floor plan to see the specifics on that. All right, work orders, you can click on this. it take a little bit of time to generate because it goes to EAM, but you can get um, work order information. On a building? Yes. Uh huh. Look at one of the what? Any restroom in like in this building or? Oh, oh, yeah. They, yes. They, um, unassignable. Yes, unassignable. Then then it, there's no space there that's assignable space. Yeah. Again, assignable is some a place where someone could sit down and, and work, if you will. Okay. So I did just work orders. Here's the building managers, where you get that. A lot of this stuff's pretty apparent, I think, for you guys. Um, before I jump into floor plans, I'm going to jump down. Have you guys seen the, the list of attributes already? So you know that uh, construction date, I mean, you can scroll through and see what's available, right? You can get the construction date of a building. Um, you can get building manager info, emergency points, <clears throat> telecommunication rooms if you needed that. If there's anything that you find that you need or would like to have a lot, or frequently, I should say, and it's not on here, you could just send us an email and let us know. We can see if we can get that information and pop it up here as an attribute. You chose, yes. Some of the some of the reports. This one has, is specific to the building. Did you have a question? A specific question or? Okay. Uh huh. Right, and 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 that's why I'm saying if there's some information that you find you get or would like to have frequently at a building level, and it's not here, just send us an email. No. No, and in many cases, we are linking to someone else's data. 
that and they maintain that they maintain that information. Or if the information like um, work orders it's in the database, we're just sending a query to the database. It's giving us the result and then we're putting it back on the page for you to see. Yes. And if we were to put it up here, then you wouldn't have to contact anyone. You would just come here. And then we would have to make sure that we had a process set up that made sure that whatever, every quarter or whenever um, the frequency is, that that report was updated. Right? And if it can be automated, we would automate that. In some of the reports, um, even though you're at one building, I'm building 160, the report may not come up and be uh, building specific. It might just be all of the building, and then you have to go through and find the building that you want. And that's just you know the best that we could have we could do at that time. Um, it's just very resource intensive to try to maintain pull all that stuff out of a report where it's being maintained and track it in there that way. Oh, well, wasn't much help, but just send us a list of, of that information, right? We just we want to try to make this a nice portal where you can go to to get um, accurate accurate data. Do you ever see anything that doesn't look correct? Maybe that sometimes the building names changes, other people get that information. <clears throat> Before me, um, you can let us know, all right? So there is a elevators report. There's an elevator in there. Um, this you can tell this is coming from a database just the way it's laid out. Otherwise, it, it, we open up usually the, the the format that the file was created in Excel or PDF or something like that. Okay. All right. So I mean that's pretty much it for my for my overview on this. There are a, a couple things I wanted to show, and that is, um, anyone ever deal with TSO maps? Yeah? So previously, oh, not really my end. I forgot about the floor plans. Skipped over that. Didn't go back. So before I get to the TSOs, just let me jump back in on the uh, finish this floor plan. The floor plans on the left, you guys know, those are just the vanilla ones, right? They're not color coded or, or anything. You can just print, print those out. We do have um, by department that's shown here. Um, this is for like faculty staff, um, and there's a building stack that shows it floor by floor. In case you haven't seen that, got them. The percentages and square footage is listed for the departments by floor. So you can see this department is, is, is got space on these two floors and a little bit of space right here. Zoom in and see that information. You have to print these out on 11 by 17. Um, for the most part. The additional resources link is where we have the um, more report, color coded reports, mainly the room type report, and also we have the occupant information. So if you wanted a, a room type report, you could pull it up and it would show the room type. We only allow one room type per room. It's whatever the, ma the majority use of that room is. Um, but with departments, if it's shared, the report would, um, I don't know if we have any shared space in here. But yes, no, that's two rooms, isn't it? Let me just do this zoom and zoom in here real quick. No. Are these four rooms and this is two? Maybe this is shared. Um, oh, this one is shared right here. So it, it's just going to have to show you that there's two groups in the room. Um, the occupant report, again, is only as good as the space coordinators updating that information. What we do is we throw it into a, uh, a chart that lists the person's name and the room number. It tries to put the name in here. In most cases, it won't fit. And if it doesn't fit all the way, there's a little asterisk, and that means that the name is in the chart. If you want any more information on this, you can always just send me an email or give me a call. We can kind of go over that more, more in depth. 
Um, these actually, the occupants can be uh, maintained by other people besides the space coordinator too. So um, if you ever wanting needing access to update occupant information, please let me know. We can make sure we get um, some access set up for that. When you go into the database to put in the occupant names, the floor plans um, are generated the next day. It's a nightly routine that runs and runs to the base database and it looks for a modified date on the record and will create the floor plans. So that's it for the graphical reports. You guys remember how I got there? Just check and see if that sugar is kicking in. Yeah. So not everyone has access to this. Everyone here should. We previously had a nice little column right here that had said TSO maps, and you could just click on the floor 00, zero and 01. We linked directly to the floor plan. Um, we were asked to not provide that direct link because it was going around um, ITS's security um, front end. So now you to get to the TSO maps, you go to our floor plan page and click on TSO. Or rather than go to FAMS and search for the building and drill all the way down in there, their address is CNS CAD. If you just went to CNS CAD, you would get here. Pretty straightforward. You look on the left over here for Bible sheet drawings. Have you guys gone here and got things be prints before? I'll just go. You just click on what quad you want, hit view, gives you a list, whatever building you want, hit view, and there it is. CNSCAD.stanford.edu, and you can even forget everything I showed you. It's pretty simple. You'd be able to navigate there just by looking at the page. All you really have to remember is this. Okay, where did I? I'm going to go back to. And so let me just type in the floor plans. With the floor plans, when you if you go there from here, it doesn't know what building you want, so you do have to search for the building. So there's some some savings of uh, pages. There we go. Some clicks, but not long. Hey. I'm going to have to get that fixed. It's supposed to take you right here, right to the floor plan page, not the building page. All right, so I covered floor plans, additional resources, JSO maps. Any questions on any of, any of that? No? Putting everyone to sleep? Now, there are some links up here at the top. You can go to the maps and records page here. Um, I'm just going to click on building info just to get some more building information. What is going on? Well, this was working earlier. I apologize for that. Oh, I know what's going on. I bet that, that link, this one is working, right? Okay. Good, I found two things. Has anyone been over here to the space floor plans and space data page? Yeah? Well, how many of you guys been everywhere? Okay. All right, anyway. This um what's nice with this page is this is where you can get a list of all the buildings, the building names, um, the parcel number that they're in, and to get that, it's right here, building list. Okay. You can get the FIMS from here, the floor plans, which basically take you to the same spot. Um, I just I want to pull up the building list real quick because sometimes what comes up is people will say that they're looking for uh, maybe the uh, emergency telephone towers or a, a structure or something and they can't find it. Um, and there's a reason why you can't find that is because this page right here is open to faculty and staff 
operational staff like LBRE and EHNet and public safety, you come up into this link right here, and that will open it up so where you can see more information. So if you use a list like this frequently, I would just suggest going to the additional references here and bookmarking it. Otherwise, you can just go in. But so as you can see, you, you can get the building name again. You can get the street address, the zone code. If I go in here, now I have even more information. So if I do a control F, bring this up, I can type uh, EMER, and I can see emergency towers here. I can click also by zone if I wanted to sort that list by the zone value or parcel value or anything like that. Jump back over. See if there's anything else I want to list here before I go back. Um, yes. Yes. In most cases, the way that it's listed here, the way that we track the zone value, is that the buildings that are owned by Stanford, they have a, a zone associated or responsible for the maintenance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't have the own, there's an owned field in the database, and we don't have that there. Yeah, I wonder, is that some, I, you use that a lot, right? Yeah. Does anyone else use use that or have a need for that? Because right now we're just asking people to come to us. So, um, I can look on, the, on this one here. This actually wouldn't be hard to add it here, if that would be helpful. Because this is additional resources. People that have come in here are already part of um, LBRE or, or EHNS or whatever, right? So it wouldn't be that hard to add. Maybe be additional information. Well, in most cases, the R is representing that Stanford has, um, they're, they're leasing some part of that building, right? Once Stanford owns the building, we deactivate this ID and we create the, a new ID without the R, right? So we've done that, um, we did it twice last year to identify, just to make it, just to keep it straightforward. So if you see the R, Stanford should not own that building. If you find a building with an R that Stanford owns, then let me know. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna jump I'm gonna jump into the um archive database. Does anyone use construction documents or have a need to look up whatever structural 
elevations of a building, with the height of the floors. Ken found the height of Hoover Tower very quickly. So there's a couple ways to get there. From um, this is just a page on the Maps and Records website. So in the Maps and Records website, you can just go over in here to um, Application and go to the Online Archive database. Everyone's probably gone in there that way. But you can also type in maps-archives and get there that way as well. Pretty straightforward here. We do have a bunch of text, um, it's, which is good to read for the first time user. Otherwise, you just go directly to the main page. If you're here frequently, just bookmark this search page. Um, get there even faster. You're looking up building information. Um, just even um, like many other places, we do provide the list of buildings. So if you don't know the building number um, or you're not sure of um, or not finding it when you type in some uh, a partial name, then you can just use this list here. Otherwise, you can just type it in. Did I get lost here? But you don't. Ha you can also um, search by the project manager. Get all the projects that we've received by that project number. It's used quite frequently. But pretty straightforward here. So I was going to. Actually, I could do uh, what's Hoover Tower 03 100. <clears throat> so you search, you have a search results page. You can um, click on any of the columns at the top up here and sort by that column. So I can sort it by date, um, sort it by project number, or whatever. There are there is a quick link here that takes to related documents that we just put up not, not too many months ago, and those would be specifications, air balance reports. Excuse me, if we had air balance reports for those, O and M manuals, various things. A lot of this information has been scanned already, so um, it just it's really nice when you go there and you search and you find it and you pull it up and you print out the manual. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but when, it, when you get down here, it's like three or four clicks, and they you get the building height of a building, and, and oh my God, you know what it took to get all that stuff done? But yeah, thanks. So on this Hoover Tower, I'm going to basically, you can see what's available here. It's pretty straightforward, but I'm going to go to the construction documents. So on the um, the page for all of for all of the documents, and maybe I can try to just do some research part um, search in a, in a minute. But we basically have um, multiple envelopes that we break the sheets into, and so the sheets that you're looking at. One big thing you just need to remember is it's a part of envelope one right here. So if you wanted, if you were looking for interior details or structural, you would just click on envelope two to refresh the information down here. <clears throat> you can tell that these drawings have been scanned because there's a link to the drawings. We are not at 100% of um, everything, So, but if you have a need for a certain package, um, you can let us know because we do have, um, we have scanning efforts going on. And we try to prioritize those. We make sure we do the academic buildings first. Um, we have people that come in that want a set of plans, a contractor or something wants three sheets. So what we'll do when they ask for those is we'll just make that a project to scan and get it done. We take the envelope, we, give, we scan those three sheets, we just scan them all, give him the three sheets, and we upload the rest. Okay. So I'm going to actually go back to envelope one. Sorry about that. I should probably silence my phone. And envelope one, I'm going to look for a elevation plan. There we go. I don't think it matters which elevation. And in this case, it's it's a little hard to see. Um, on, on my screen as well. And this is looks like it's 
needs to be rotated. So I, because I'm not as savvy as everyone else in here, I use that rotate command twice. And then I'll zoom in over here. And then I can see the floor, the elevation of each floor or the elevation of the top right here. Okay. I just, I, Ken found that and I just like to show it off now. Well, I was doing this as a little demo and I was just saying that you could get the elevation of the Hoover Tower. And before I was done, like within eight minutes, he had pulled it up from his iPad or whatever he had and said, oh, it's 224 feet. So, res very resourceful. Um, yeah, so I mean, this is this is pretty pretty straightforward. One thing that I'm I'm hoping to that we can do, and project managers, um, other people may find this um, very helpful, is you can easily open these up, save them. I believe you might even be able to do a right click and save. What happens if you wanted all of the sheets for the project? What I'm doing right now is converting. I have a student helping me. Um, we have a, a well, whatever. We're going to create a one file that will be a multi-page, and it will be all of the sheets. So you just download that one file and get everything. Yeah. So there'll be a nice, nice time saver there, right? Did you? Did you talk to Suman about that? Well, great, great minds think alike. <laughs> Can I get that in writing? Okay, we have witnesses, right? I'll take some donuts, that's for sure. Okay. So I don't have too much too much more to show on this. You can go back to the search results page. Do a new search. We do also have information that's out exterior to build to building, right? So we have um various types of group groupings. There's some examples right here. So if you wanted like um, a campus map or something, maybe you search for lands. You get some Stanford lands. The list is fairly long here. And so usually I'm, I'm kind of late. Well, it's even, uh, I'm, I'm a little lazy, so I just do control F and type in campus and then just let it search for me. Maybe I'm looking for the flood control or the Campus duck system or Mayfield bike paths. Maybe I want to see the bike paths, and then you can pull that information up. Okay. So we do have utilities, underground utilities in here, um, steam information, whatever. And that all of that should be pretty apparent um, by by the search search criteria here. So we do have so some key, yes. Um, I there's probably a couple more choices than what we fit in this box right here. Yeah. 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 So project title. I'm not sure. One thing also with the research park is we provided a um, it's own quad number, if you will. The quad number is the first two digits of the building ID. So if you were to, um, well, you could pull up the list of values. This would probably be the easiest thing to do, is to just pull up the list of values and go down into quad 20, and then try to find a building based on the address. So California Avenue, El Camino, um, Hanover Street, what is this, 32? 51, and then I come down and search, and then this uh, is used to be a Lockheed building. The newest plan is uh, 1995, it looks like, material storage rooms. but So we do have a lot of the um, research park buildings in, in there. But if we don't have something, just let us know. Just, yeah, we try to track that information down. Sometimes we find that the county has it, someone else has it. Keep it. All right. So I will very smoothly jump back over here.
questions for you. Yeah. So what does FEM stand for? Did I even say that? You get extra points if you know what that stands for, because I didn't even say what it stood for. What is it? Yes, you're right. OK. You can have, um, I, I brought uh, some extra um, surprises. <laughs> the surprises are over there. Uh, what kind of information can you get from the FEMS portal? Pretty, pretty barren. Yeah, a lot of different types of information. But you don't need to tell me that, right? How about the floor plan URL? That's a good one. Did, what, what, uh, hey, don't look down on your piece of paper. What's the URL for floor plan? Yeah, floor plans at stanford.edu. Okay. I know. You guys are going to be mad at me, right? Yeah, what do you think we are? A bunch of dummies? What's the fast way to get the construction documents? How about that? What's the URL? Maps dash archives. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I think. Oh, yeah, we're done. Yes. I just yeah you know I that just started someone someone brought that up not too long ago and so I just put that um, as part of the emailing process because I wasn't sending an email out um, for demolish demolition and so I will be starting that and the next building will be. Oh, you are good. That's I was, you got that number before I did. Yeah, those nine. I know that it's uh, zero set or the nine nine fifty A, B, and C or whatever. Yeah, right. That'll be coming out very soon. So yeah, good. Well, thanks for bringing that up. Anything else? No. All right. Well, what time is it anyway? Thanks, everyone.